Sis and tell, sis and tell. A whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. Amanda does stand up. Allison's on TV. And when they hop on the phone, it's the place you want to be. Sis and tell. A whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. Hey, Allie. Hi, man. What's going on? Just chilling, ready for the weekend. All right, I have an I have a perplexed situation, a oh. situation that has perplexed me. I'm not sure okay. where that word goes. So this is a, this is a one of those. I'm throwing it out to you and to our listeners, and maybe they can help me. So I I get some packages. Let's say I, I order from places that want to send me packages. You have <laughs> you have a neighbor who also <laughs> ends up with your packages. And I you do never see them. I'm at uh, my address is 1104. And there's another Allison at 1004 on the same street. And That's so every so often yeah. she gets them, but it, we, we sort of resolve that. Now I figured out that um, it's really FedEx. Sorry to throw FedEx under the bus, but FedEx is the one that screws it up mostly. So anytime I order and I think the, the shipping is going to be FedEx, I send it to Levi. Because there's no, there's no oh, that's using smart. Yeah. Levi with Allison. So here we go. So this is this came about a week ago, and I, it's bothered me ever since. So um, I'm showing you, but this is like a tiny little. It's about the size of a of a credit card. The yeah. entire package. It's through the USPS. So it's through the mail service. And Allison is showing me an envelope that she got in the mail from the USPS. Yeah. So it's just it's not even an envelope. It's like a mini little package. Mm -hmm. And it's flat. And I opened it up. And here's what's inside. I'm going to show you and describe it. This wooden sort of, it looks like a a large guitar pick. but it's Like a keychain or something. Yeah. And it's got a hole at the top, at the the tip edge. But it's like like two or three times the size of a normal guitar pick. And it's wooden. And then silver, (laughs) silver like confetti strips. There's probably like seven, six or seven silver strips of confetti. Okay. And that was it do you know who it's from no and the return address <laughs> literally just says wait is it addressed shipping to you? center yeah shipper center is from shipper center it is literally to me there's a tracking number and everything so somebody tracked that it was getting to me well did you put it in put the tracking number in the usps website and you can see where it originated from i know where it originated from it originated from the shipper center in New York. That's bizarre. In Rock Tavern, New York. I don't know what shipper center. I don't know if somebody was doing like a test run to make sure something got to me. No. I mean, but it <laughs> doesn't like, make who, any sense. <laughs> it makes no Wait, sense. Wait, show it to me again. It's okay. like a teardrop shaped wooden, wooden thing, thing that's <laughs> like two inches long. Literally, it looks like yeah. a guitar pick, and it looks it like a, yeah, it looks like a giant teardrop. It's that is about so weird. It's so weird. Oh, here I have a measuring tape, so I'll even tell you how big it is. It's about two, um, about two inches. Yeah, a little over two inches. Two. Let's call that two and a quarter inches long by uh, one and a half inches wide, <laughs> and then these silver strips. It is so weird. How many, and how, how many of those silver strips are there? Okay, so to this be exact, let's see. one, two, the... <laughs> three, four, you know, enough to, to pad the, the wooden guitar thing. Oh, do you um, think it was six, used... seven? Yeah, seven. Do you think it was used as padding? Those sil- the, or like are the silver, the silver strips, are they a part of the package, like the gift? They are. They... <laughs> so they, it's sort of like something you would put in packaging, but in, if you put it in bulk, it yeah. would protect whatever you were sending. In this yeah. case, there's only like seven of them and a wooden little medallion. Oh, my God. What? So I just put in wooden teardrop, and immediately I get this on. <gasps> it's, it looks exactly like that. Wait, yeah. where is that from? It's from on Etsy. Etsy. It just says, and they're just like wooden craft circles, which is what that looks like. Like it looks like a, something you'd use. And the question is, what would you use this for? There's a lot of them. But on why? on yeah. Etsy, it looks like uh, you would decorate it and maybe hang like an earring um, hook on it. Like that's what they look like. Like okay, they're just but like. Why did somebody send me one? And why just one? And why just one? I so think, it is a thing people order. 
Right. But usually, because they're probably so inexpensive and cheap, you would get a bunch of them. And this says earring blanks. That's what, it is like an ear, that is so bizarre. That I is don't, so bizarre. I don't know why you would just get one of those. And there's like, look, they come in all these different I see that. Shapes. And look, and I said keychain because there's a little hole at the top that looks like you would put something in it. Yeah. That's weird. I don't know why you would have gotten that. Yeah. Well, it makes me feel better that it's it's something that exists. And it's, somebody... a, it's jewelry supply. Because look, these here's another one. They're all over Etsy. You I can probably definitely get... do not order anything like that on yeah, Etsy. I, they, somehow the, this is like, I, I ended up with someone else's makeup. Like someone had ordered from like some. All right, we talked end. about this. This is right. when you ended up keeping it because yeah. you couldn't even and, get it to them. <laughs> but they had my address. That's yeah. the weird thing. And and I was like, I don't. And it was for a redhead because it was a, like eyeliner. It was like red eyeliner or something. So I don't know why anyone would ever wear red eyeliner unless it was no. for a costume. I don't know. That's bizarre. It's so bizarre. Well, and I don't. I don't know. Anyway, as long as it's not like some stalker. It's but if not. it's a jewelry maker who <laughs> just wants to send me free jewelry next time and not like the unfinished kind, then right. you have my correct address. I'm not going to say it publicly, but go ahead. Maybe it was a else. sample. They thought they were sending out some supplies to someone and they just wanted a sample of one thing before they ordered it in bulk and yeah. they just got the address completely wrong. But it says Allison Lebovitz on it. Yeah, yeah. It's got everything, everything correct. It's hard to get that wrong. That is so weird. Yeah. Did you order anything from anyone where the packaging, where the in, the innards could have been mixed up? No. Okay. No. Especially not something this small. It's clearly like just a thing. So, but maybe somebody was just ordering one of these for an earring and it got sent to me. I'm sorry if this was meant for you. I think it probably cost 10 cents. Yeah. No, go to Michael's. Go to right. Hobby Lobby. Go to, <laughs> if you need it. Go, why would you order something that's 40 cents? That, like, stamp costs more than that, whatever. Well, clearly, I don't think people order these in singles. They're probably ordering, you know, 20 at a time if they're really a jewelry maker. Anyway, well, enough spent on that. But I've, weird. I, it's just weird. That is I weird. Can't, some things I send never make it there, and then things I don't order make it to me. I know. The world is a crazy, mixed-up place. Oh, my God. What's the world coming to? <laughs> but, you know, I have a good news for you. Yeah. That you don't just have to rely on me. Or our friend Gail, or crowdsourcing to anonymous people who listen to our podcast about your questions, that there is a website you can go to, not Google. <laughs> I was going to say, is it called Google? Because is, I'm not that sheltered. It is even more intelligent than Google, and that's Chat GPT. Have you heard of this? Oh, gosh. This God. is where have you been? Yes. I, well, I, was, I don't know where you've been. That is the question. First of all, it's not, Chat GPT is not really what you're talking about. Like, if I need to find something, Chat GPT is for writing. So it's for crafting. It's It answers questions, but it really is, is, the, the most useful part of it is to write things like yeah. essays and things like that. And now all right. the colleges are, are really, you know, clamping down on it because students are using it to I bet you could write ask, their papers. I bet we could ask chat GPT some questions and they'd help us with the answers. Right. I get it. But I don't, I thought I told you this. So I went on there to, to see, you know, if it could write me something. And then I ended up asking it to write a new um, theme song. For oh, yeah. Sisintel. It was and basically it was like terrible. our existing yeah. theme song. <laughs> yeah, it was, do not ask it to write theme songs. It's not good. But I saw there was something on the news uh, recently, and it said that it gave them, uh, it gave ChatGPT a um, a test, like a law school test, and it passed. That's I think crazy. it got like a B plus on, a, on one thing, and, a, and it passed with C's on another. So it is very smart, and it constantly is getting smarter. This is a free um, AI, a free, a free open AI for anybody who, um, who wants to use it. And this well, artificial intelligence feels very realistic. It's so amazing. I ran, I ran into a friend last night. Uh, his name is Paul Wolpe and he actually is the head of the like ethics department. I know Paul, yeah. you know, Paul. Oh yeah. It's that's David right. Wolpe's brother. Is that, he's rabbi, the head yeah. of the ethics department at Emory. Yeah, so I started, I, I got into uh, discussions with him about AI and he told me this story about, well, first he said, AI runs on rules that humans provide. And there are so many rules that we go by that we just don't even think of and that we 
may not teach AI, so they don't have all the information. So there are two computers, two AIs that were playing tic-tac-toe, and the tic tac toe, tic tac toe. What did I say? Tic tac tic tac toe, which also would be I, a great game, <laughs> right? Which I, wa I, I, I'm on tic tac way too much, so that's what happened there. Um, and like the their their objective was to win, right? And they didn't give them many rules except the rules of tic tac toe. And he said the one AI essentially killed off. <laughs> The other AI. I mean, he he turned the AI. He. I'm giving it like pronouns, but right. it turned off the other AI. It figured out how to turn it off so it could just win. Yeah. And they didn't put in the rules you can't do that. But it really essentially just killed off the other computer or yeah. put it to sleep. Yeah. Right? Guess who predicted this would happen? Um. Uh. I don't know who wrote um Terminator. That's it. <laughs> the Terminator. Yeah. The Terminator figured out that this was going to happen. And if we didn't learn from watching Arnold Schwarzenegger take over the world because computers were going to destroy us, then, you know, we kind of saw that movie and went, oh, yeah, Arnold, he was pretty good in that movie. And Terminator 2 and Terminator 3. It, yeah. You know, we still didn't learn. Never These ending. computers, they are smart. They're smart. Mm -hmm. And we're making them smarter. I'd and they learn. have Wally. Yeah. Wally is the AI I'm, I'm all for. Yeah. It's like, um, what was that movie from the 80s? That's what he looks like. Johnny Five is alive. <laughs> short circuit. <laughs> short circuit. That is Wally. I loved short circuit. But I, I thought we could I thought we could go on to um chat GPT and ask them for what we should talk about on the podcast. All right, well, it's hard to get on sometimes. I've I've been trying to get on well, I've gone on a couple of times and every time I go on I have to try multiple times because it says it's full and then it says hey i'll write an acrostic poem about waiting for chat gpt hey i'm gonna write a rap song as you wait for chat gpt it's pretty funny so it actually it it like entertains itself and you while you're trying to wait to get on but i just sort of kind of like oh keep my reloading god. are you on oh, this is way too serious i just said oh my god they chat gpt is going off what happened I it is lots of, I, okay, I said, what should I talk about on a podcast about Southern Jewish sisters? And they had, it's really, this sounds like a documentary. It's, it's, it's way too serious. <laughs> well, that's what I said. It's, it's a, it's a prolific writer. The, the way that people have caught it is because apparently its grammar is a hundred percent perfect and nobody oh. writes with a hundred percent perfect grammar. Although, you know, that's my famous line that every day is a struggle to correct people's grammar and to have friends. Right. <laughs> struggle is real. Um, but I'm going to be more specific. Way. I'm going to be more specific because um, I said just Southern Jewish sisters on a podcast, what should we talk about? And now I've said um, what should on a funny podcast about Southern Jewish sisters who grew up in the 1980s. Mm. So it's still, it's, it's way, it's not interesting enough. Growing, uh, we could talk about growing up in a Southern Jewish community in the eighties, discuss the unique experiences of Southern Jewish sisters. We already do this. It's no. Not, yeah. Um, see if it can see, this is what's interesting. See if it can pull up about anything about the Goldstein family in Birmingham, Alabama. Do you know anything about <laughs> the Goldstein? See, this is better than uh, 23 and, and me. Bur Birmingham. Chat GPT and me. Alabama. I guess that's like a yes or no question. Well, the, um, but the beauty of this is it's not like Google where you ask it. It's not, it's not, you know, sort of the singular approach. You can ask it a question and then you can build on it the way that you are now, you know, sort of drilling down into the nuts and bolts of what you want to learn. And it'll mm -hmm. keep synthesizing that information to pull up relevant um, answers. So unlike a Google where you ask a question, then you have to go back and refine your question and it starts to search all over. This continues on that same sort of rabbit hole, but refines it. Did that happen or no? No. Okay. <laughs> this is, yeah. Um, or is it pulling up stuff we do not want to say in public? <laughs> you yeah. have that look on your face. No, well, I said, then I said, what do you know about Red Bell Cafe in Montgomery, Alabama? And this can't be correct. And that is, it's because this, the red, there must have been a red bell that served um, food. And that's what it's referencing because grandpa's red bell, was it called the red bell or not the cafe? Wasn't it just the red bell? Yeah, I think it was the red bell cafe. Okay. Was it not, the, was, maybe not, or the red bell 
Hmm. I think it served food. It didn't serve food. Not for this, sure. There's no way that they were serving steak and fried no. chicken. No, I don't think so. Um, but okay. I don't remember. I remember just eating you drinking yoo-hoo's and eating like cheese curls. Right. It was prepackaged food. So this is not. It doesn't know about. Um, it doesn't know about the bar. It just the. Uh, all right. That's this is not interesting. Sorry, no, Chat it's GPT. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Chat GPT. But it is it's a fascinating approach. I'm I'm glad that um, you know, Professor Wolpe, um, commented about that and and how it's it really the machinery is smart, but it's not human. And right. so it, it has, doesn't have morals. Like correct. you have to you would have to set up rules for morals for that for it to follow. Right? Yeah, but even doing that, I mean it's look, limiting. Yeah. And we have supposedly a moral code in, in our human existence and people don't follow that. So what's to say that the AI would follow it if it didn't think it was in its best interest? Yeah. Well, there's something else I've been crowdsourcing and not through GPT and it's through humans. And you're going to think I'm nuts or you're just going to say this is on brand. But as you may or may not. <laughs> One and the same. <laughs> as you may or may not remember, I'm scheduled to get a colonoscopy in a couple of weeks. And I thought it would be hilarious if I write something on my butt, like a message for the proctologist and her nursing staff. And so I I'm, think you mean gastroenterologist. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. Is that what a gastro is one who does usually, unless a proctologist is usually somebody who's like dealing with surgery. And if you've got something, I think, should the gastro find something in your colon yeah. or on your colon, then um, that, they would probably send to you the to a surgeon. A surgeon well, yeah. we're just going to generically say the butt doctor. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to. We're gonna we're gonna say the butt doctor. I wanted to leave a message for her and her staff, who I've already met, and they seem to have a really great rapport with me. <laughs> so you're gonna like? How are you gonna write it yourself? You're gonna take I'm not a sharpie gonna and write look in it the mirror? myself. No, Aaron's gonna oh write it for me. Oh my gosh, that and he is, is too he much. Is really bad penmanship. But some people have been besides giving ideas of what I should write on my tuchus. They've all this one woman's like, I've had like ten colonoscopies. You need to make sure you write it on the right cheek, okay? Because you're gonna be on your side. She gave me like the logistical information I needed to make this work, and she said it's a little also dark in there so they may not see it but i think at what some if you point, write with are on. okay so i'm just gonna i'm not well, let me be clear i'm not encouraging this yeah but if i were to encourage it i would say what if you wrote with sort of like glow in the dark ink right. to ensure that it showed up that would That's be true. hilarious yeah, but then it, what do, but do i have to sh i might have to shine a flashlight on it first so it works once it's in the dark you know second so of all just, i don't trust aaron to actually write what you say he oh, should God. write. That's I can scary. see him taking it upon himself to do something that he Poetic thinks is license. funny. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure it's what you would think is funny. I could just so. do googly eyes also and turn my, bu my butt into a face. That's one option. Yeah, because the butt's not funny enough. You really do need to dress it up in That's order right. to. <laughs> but look, I know you think this is strange, but you know what people have been responding with is that they've done similar things or they know someone who's done similar things. In fact, Julie Locke, our friend in common, she did this. She had drew arrows pointing to her butt. Of course she did. Of course so, she did. And I, I said to her, I've always known that I've liked you and I, I just like her even more now. Right. <laughs> so but I'm not alone in this. Other people have done this. It's not original. I wish it was, but mm. <laughs> maybe it'll be new for this doctor. But you know what? It was inspired by. It was inspired by one of our dads, uh, Beavis best. and Butthead. I can't <laughs> even imagine. <laughs> no, oh, basically he's the he was the old school Beavis and Butthead, which is Bruce Sokol. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. This is our dad's one of his oldest friends and closest friends who's just unpredictable with some of the things <laughs> he does. Yeah, that's that is putting nice it mildly to say. Uh but he went he had to go see the proctologist for some sort of exam and you know okay. what he did? You know this story? He, he did he shove something up his butt? Yeah he did. Yeah. He, like a he, like a was it a Lego character or something like no <laughs> was, that oh was God. It? Uh, that oh that's you're just or that, oh no I know what it was there. was it a note? Mm-hmm Oh, yeah. What did it say? Remind me. It said, me. help me. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it said, help me. Help me. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in there. 
Now that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Can you do that instead? Because that's hilarious. I don't want to leave a note there. What if they don't see it and they just, with the camera, get shoved yeah, further up my butt? That, then you'd really have to have surgery for yeah. the, the note. Then it'd really be stuck. I don't want to get a paper cut. That's no, going to be a bad place. That is hilarious. To get a paper cut. Help but, me. I'm stuck. But maybe I could do like a drawn arm reaching out of my butt. <laughs> reaching out of my butt with like a, like a... Um, a thought bubble or something. Oh Help my me. gosh! I'm stuck in there. But that, um, like he's like the originator of um, pulling pranks on your proctologist. <laughs> oh my gosh! But who knew that uh, this would be so popular on all my social medias? And I'm really drawing attention to the importance of getting a colonoscopy. That's what matters most. Yeah, I so. think. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you know what? For a PSA, good for you. Yeah, it's, I it's am making it cool. I'd and like to say funny. I'm normalizing it, but I, no. <laughs> I would say I'm abnormalizing it. <laughs> well, you know, um, Alan, years ago, so right before he turned 40, so this is not to age him, he, this is 15 years ago, he, um, he broke his collarbone and had to go get surgery. And so he, I'm sitting in the waiting room and they call me back because they do that. Like for surgeries like this, they actually take a Sharpie and they circle the correct shoulder or collarbone or knee or whatever it is. And then they put an X on the other one, just like as just, you know, the doctor looks at the chart. Do obviously. not. Right. Do, do not. not do this one. Yeah. This is the correct one. So I'm in there and the nurse is circling his, the collarbone. And then she's putting an X on the other side and she's asking him questions. And he's clearly, you know, not under anything yet, but just making sure he's lucid. And she's like, what's your name? You know, what's your date of birth? Who's your doctor? What are you here for? And Alan answered all the questions correctly. He said, I'm here to, you know, get my collarbone fixed. <laughs> so I said, um, and I mean, just in case, if you could loan me the Sharpie, I'd be happy to then draw an arrow pointing downwards to say, if the doctor has time, he can do a little snipping and give him a vasectomy at the same time. And that's Which is when, funny. Which, which is, is funny. funny yeah. Except I forgot that he was in a Catholic hospital. So the nurse <laughs> did not think it was very funny. And I didn't catch on immediately, but she looked at me and said, well, you know, the doctor doesn't perform that kind of, um, you know, procedure. I thought she meant, you know, because he clearly is a shoulder that doesn't surgeon. specialize in yes. that. So I said, <laughs> and so then I have to keep Oops. going and I'm like, oh, well, well <laughs> I understand that, but you know, he went through residency and probably, you know, had some, you know, he had some experience that I go, and it's really, it's not invasive. They're just hanging out there. So there's, you know, he, she he is could not just do a little picking up. No. And she is getting more and more upset. Meanwhile, the male nursed nurse anesthetist who was behind her is cracking up and she is getting more infuriated it's almost like she was a nurse slash nun and she's like to say <laughs> she's like well <laughs> what about the fact that we don't even do that procedure here and I was like oh and all of a sudden it dawned on me who I was talking to and Alan's <laughs> no. looking at me like really you're gonna piss off my main nurse right before I'm going under the knife exactly and so oh, they start God. wheeling them away and I'm like Good luck. okay <laughs> just a thought have fun <laughs> Enjoy your nap. Yeah, so, but there's, oh you know, God. there is something to be said in modern day healthcare to be able to take care of two things at once. And veterinarians have already <laughs> cornered the market on this. Yeah. No, it's true. Like, ha you know, when we had Hershey and she had to have some procedure and they had to put her under for something, the vet said, while she's under, we should go ahead and do brush a, her teeth uh, and do a brush. Yeah. yeah. And do a teeth cleaning because Honey. the dogs hate it. And they, it's better if they're under anesthesia or whatever. It's called and upselling my, you. It's it, called well, <laughs> it is, but I call it a twofer. So I'm always thinking like, how do you combine some of the least pleasant procedures in mm -hmm. the medical community together? Like, it's you know, interesting. I tried to make this happen when I had, when I gave birth to the twins, and I knew I was getting a C-section. I said, can you also give me a little belly button makeover? I was yes. like, can't you just like do something like yeah. some sort of belly button makeover? Like, right. Like, I don't know how we're going to make this happen, but you can figure it out. Be resourceful. Do you need a couple extra stitches? I don't know, but yeah. make it work. I just think there, if there are different doctors who perform way different surgeries, except 
the anesthesia might be the same and the time under might be in equal measure that you could actually get two things done at once. Yeah. It makes total sense. I would totally pay for a twofer, right? At the least, like a pedicure while you're getting. <laughs> exactly. Right? Right. Yeah. I mean, color my hair. I've got nothing else to do. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to maximize my remaining time on earth. Trying and I think this efficient. is a great way. I'm trying to be efficient. I think this is a great way to do it. Did you think also the nurse didn't like that you were giving your husband a hard time and it was like his oh, body? No. She was, was, she was about... specifically upset and flustered about the fact that I was suggesting yeah. a vasectomy in a hospital that does not perform them. Because one time so. I got in trouble with, um, I would, I guess I'd call him a medical professional, but you know, Aaron has sleep apnea and the first time he found out he had to get fitted for like a CPAP machine and they come to the house and they show you how it works and they fit it on you. So I'm there. And so she is like, I guess the medical device professional and he puts this thing on and I immediately (laughs) start cracking up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, you look like Gonzo. I was doing, like, all of like, I was roasting him. And she got so mad at me. And she's like, you need to leave him alone. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Let's be clear. That CPAP machine does look like the love child of Hannibal Lecter and Jacques Cousteau. It's a horrible device. And it I is. think they've improved. Alan had to wear it for about a week when they thought he had sleep apnea, but he doesn't. And I'm like, there's just, there's no way. This, I, you know, I'd rather you snore <laughs> like, than wear that. Poor guy. He's got, he's going camping and he's taking a battery with him to make it work. He needs, I've, I really saved his life. I have to say, cause I'm the one who was like, I think you have sleep apnea. Right. Which means now, he stops breathing yes, in the middle of the night, which is stops, very scary. And yeah. he's like, was getting headaches because he wasn't getting enough oxygen. Right. So that anyway, I saved his life. I can also make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> like. That's what you should have said to the nurse, right? I saved his life, so he is, he owes me, and now he's fodder for my comedy. <laughs> There's a quid pro quo in our relationship that you're not aware of. Right. Read our ketubah. Oh, you can because it's in Aramaic and Hebrew? Right. Well, in our ketubah, it says that yeah. there is a quid pro quo for everything. Which and means... ketubah is a Jewish marriage license, by the way, and it's like all in Hebrew, right? So, yeah, I can always just say it's in the ketubah. Yeah, that's what I say. To this day, Alan really thinks laundry and doing the dishes is in the ketubah. Don't <laughs> tell him it's not. <laughs> He's so good at it. He is so good. He doesn't know this, but I volunteered. Well, now he'll know. But uh, I volunteered him the other night. I was in a board meeting, and my friend was saying that she needs to get a new washer and dryer. And she goes, I can afford it, but I just, I'm never, she works full time. She goes, I'm not home for the people to come in to install it. So she's been going to the laundromat until she can figure this out. And I said, you know what? If you want to just, you know, drop this off once a week. My husband loves doing laundry and we're empty nesting. So we really don't have a he lot of laundry to notice. do. He won't, he won't even, even notice. <laughs> yeah. So like she's a moment like, of I think that would be great. So I could start a home laundry service and I'll just sneak it into the load when he leaves. That exists. I'll, you know, yeah. And he there, can, he loves folding laundry too. There's so he an might app. question who it, what it is, but after that, I think I could, you know, make a good living off of his skills. There's an app where you can outsource your laundry to people. Right. Really? It's kind of like Task Rabbit, but it, it concentrates on, on laundry. So they'll come pick up your laundry. They probably do it in their house and they deliver it back to you. So who needs an app? I have a ketuba. I, <laughs> I have a husband. I have an Allen. For 25 and a half years. Right. Who okay. Needs I, an need, app when you have an Allen? I need your advice on something or your opinion. Is am I um and I, I have not heard complaints from my husband about this, but <laughs> this is getting this may be beyond my territory go ahead no I think it is uh in your territory in your territory because this has probably happened to you Mm. with Alan but he will oftentimes load the dishwasher and it's like he's putting things in willy-nilly right and I will reload it I will reorganize it mostly because I am the one who is unloading and he is loading it in an inefficient way that makes it more more time consuming for me to unload it and I can fit more the way that I do it and I feel like I'm following the rules of the of the the dishwasher of where they want things and he's just throwing things in wherever he can fit them for me it's tetris right right so am i, am I is that annoying does like am i like in the wrong for reloading a dishwasher so I never, ever 
thought I would say this in public, especially, but I am the Aaron in this scenario. I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm asking. You. Does and it bother you when he It doesn't bother me because here's what happened to us. The first time Alan literally called me over to the dishwasher to show me the error in my dishwasher loading ways yeah. and said, look, this is not efficient. You need to do this, this. And I said, guess what? It's all yours. I will now <laughs> just leave my dishes in the sink and you can load the dishwasher any way you see fit. Well, that yeah. was also, that was that, that threat of chaos was more than he could stomach, even with a chaotic dishwasher. So I have, I am now more intentional in approach because I feel like if he, he also unloads. So I, uh, I'm loading it, you know, according to what I think is maximizing. I will say the other day I noticed he literally moved. There's only two of us. So it's not even like we (laughs) wash dishes once a week. He literally moved one glass bowl to a different position. So it was touching the other glass bowl. Meanwhile, it's, it's like 10% of the dishwasher was full. (laughs) It could have been anywhere. It could have had as much space as, as it wanted, right? There, there is no social distancing in my dishwasher. Everything has to be very tight in anticipation of more dishes coming. That's funny. Which is good, but yeah. So So, Alan would say that's annoying that you should maximize the space. Yeah. Thank you. And you know what? It's like in our DNA. Mommy put daddy in charge of the dishwasher because he needed a job. (laughs) (laughs) This was in like in college that uh, I came home and it was just me and mommy and daddy. And we were like eating breakfast and and in the middle of taking my first bite of my bagel. And he goes, are you done with that? I'm like, what? And mommy goes, Milton. And he goes, the knife. And she's like, Milton. And and I go, I mean, I guess. And he he takes the knife, rinses it off, and then puts it in the dishwasher. She goes, she's not even done eating breakfast. But he has been put in charge of loading the dishwasher. So as soon as you're done with something. That was even in high school. I was said, the sooner those dishes are loaded, the sooner daddy can be on the couch with his pudding pop. That's it. (laughs) Or he would also make chocolate pudding. And and then he would just eat it out of the yeah. the pan. That's where I get it from. That's where yeah, I get it from. That's where we all get it from. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening to the latest Sis and Tell podcast. Don't forget to share us with your friends. Share us with your family. Share us with your foes. As always, this has been Amanda and Allison with a whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. We'll catch you next time. Sis and Tell.